Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to the long-awaited Biob review. So I've actually had a Biob Air 60 Terrarium for over a year now. I've had it quite a long time and I do keep my Monstera Oblica in this terrarium. It was planted in there on my channel a while ago. It's been rescaped since, I think, and I've had it in there ever since. I have had a lot of different plants in there in the past, including, I think, Begonia. I've had Queen Anthurium in there. I've had many different things in there, but for now, I mainly have the Oblica inside the orb. I do have some bromeliads and some other you know bits and bobs but that's kind of providing a backdrop for the oblique it's not really to grow as such it's just kind of framing the oblique really nicely in there so as i have had this for over a year i think it is finally time to give my review and i have a lot to say so without further ado let's just get started so in case you're watching this and you have no idea what a biorb is, a biorb is an automatic terrarium designed by the company Oase or Oaza. It's essentially a round enclosed orb that keeps your plants humid, lit and watered so you don't have to worry too much about whatever you've got growing inside. This is currently the only smart terrarium that always do, and it is 60 liters. It comes in two colors, gray and white. I have the gray model here, and the biorb is sold in the region of 350 Great British Pounds. That is $439 approximately as of recording this video. Fun fact, nobody really knows this, but I actually own two biorbs. The first of the two biorbs I own is here in this flat, and the second of the two biorbs I own actually lives in this shop. It's actually empty at the moment in the shop, but I will go into that a little bit later. So I'm going to give this review a bit of a structure, basically just so it's as useful for you as it could possibly be. The features that really make this terrarium an automatic terrarium are the self-watering, the lighting, the humidity, and the fans to keep the air flowing as well. So I'm going to break down a few of the features and discuss them in a little bit more detail so you get an understanding of how this thing actually works. So the first feature I would like to talk about is the self-watering system, which is basically a reservoir in the base of the orb that you can't see, but it's there. And water sits in this reservoir and there is a shelf above this reservoir with a little piece of capillary matting and that is what facilitates the self-watering. It is pretty basic, but it does keep my plants watered for maybe over three months, I would say. Obviously, whether that works for you depends on the, the mass of plants that you have in there, how thick the roots are, everything else. So that might vary from person to person, but my experience is that that takes around about three months to run out. There is no real fill line as such to fill up this water reservoir so it's not the easiest thing in the world to track whether your biob needs filling up. The water indicator is essentially a clear tube down the back of the biob where you can actually see where the water comes up to. The only way to fill this reservoir full of water is to take your water whether that be in a bottle or anything else. I do actually recommend a bottle if you're going to do this but you take your bottle of water and you pour it around the sides of the biob that way the water will touch the side and it will kind of flow into the reservoir at the bottom. It will obviously have to bypass, you know, the soil that's here, but it will flow into the bottom of the reservoir. In terms of removing water from this reservoir, I think I tried once to pull out the tubing, the clear tubing, and kind of siphon it out from there. It wasn't the easiest thing to do though, so I don't really recommend doing that. But if you want to clean this reservoir here, you kind of can't without taking the unit to bits. And you can't really do that while there's plants in because there there is no way to get from the substrate to the reservoir at the bottom. In terms of what type of water to use for the self-watering system, it would be best to use distilled water or rainwater, but honestly, tap water has worked for me. I see no problems, I don't see anything breaking. It's not that kind of system as it is just plastic shelving and a capillary mat. I don't really see how this would screw up if you use tap water. However, that said, bear in mind if you are using tap water, do make sure to be careful because you will get mineral buildup in the bottom of the tank. Maybe don't use tap water. So the capillary matting is quite thin. 
I was very, very surprised when I got the orb. I didn't think it was going to work, but I, I can honestly tell you that it does work. Even though that matting might feel very thin, it does do the job and it keeps things very, very, very moist, actually. Can be a little bit too moist, which I will also get into a little bit later. I did find a while ago, if anybody remembers, I used to have a Monstera Eskeletor, or formerly known as Epipremnoides back then. I used to have it in the biob in the background. And when it came to removing this Monstera Eskeletor, it was virtually impossible because because it had grown into the capillary matting and I actually had to cut the matting to get it out. Now that that's the self-watering system briefly covered, let's move on to a quick chat really about the shape of the biob. So as the name of course does suggest, this biob is 100% round, it is an orb. Now this was designed so that you could basically see all of your plants from any angle and you wouldn't have any obstructions. But in my opinion, you're either going to love or hate this feature. And I say this based on where you'd like to place the orb. So if you want to place the orb on a table like mine is currently sat on, that's absolutely fine. If you have a thinner table, however, or maybe a side cabinet, it's not guaranteed that you're going to be able to sit this orb where you'd like to sit it. Obviously, because the shape is convex and the base is small, it doesn't really matter what size the base is because the widest point of your orb is right here. You need to make sure that you have something that is this wide in order to fit your bio. Orb. It's worth mentioning that the power cord for the lid, where basically all the brains of the orb are, does kind of hang down the back of the orb. It's not really a problem, just be mindful when you're planting it up. And if there's something you'd like to do to cover that cord, then maybe place something that's much taller at the back of the orb in order to cover that. Personally, I do find the biome to be a little bit bulky, but for now, I have it sat on a perfectly round coffee table, so it's not causing me any issues, but I feel like if I tried to put it somewhere else, then it would definitely be an issue. Another thing to note about the shape of the biome is really the height that this shape gives you. Now, depending on what you'd like to grow in this orb, this orb will either work for you or not work for you. So if you're into things like dual orchids, smaller terrarium plants, maybe some carnivorous plants, maybe some tiny little ferns, then this is probably going to work for you really well shape-wise. If you're into more queen anthuriums, even a lot of monstera or the bigger bulkier heart-shaped plants, this is not going to work for you with this shape. Aroids, of course, are generally a little bit too tall for this, so I would stay away from that and I would consider planting more small, compact plants plants than aroids. Some orchids as well will probably go really, really well in this biome. I do think a lot of people tend to plant orchids in here and it works really, really well. So not just dual orchids, but regular orchids as well. Another thing to mention, this isn't really the shape, it's more the material the orb is made of. And it's just a quick note. So this orb here is not made from glass. I probably didn't mention that before. It is made from acrylic, which is fine. It's a lot lighter than glass, but what can happen very easily is that you can scratch your orb. I do somewhere on my Orb, I have a scratch and funny enough I think it's oh it's here right here I have a scratch you probably can't see it in the video but it is right here you can mark the surface of your orb which does detract from of course your viewing pleasure I have heard reports of people taking these biobs out of the box and they're already marked and some of them have to be sent back to be replaced so that kind of tells me that these are very very easy to scratch so please, please, please be very, very careful when moving it or when planting it up or maybe pushing it flush to something. You could genuinely damage your biob. Now that we've covered the shape and overall appearance of the biob, let's move on to the lights. The biob has six LED lights at 5,600 Kelvin, which is basically the equivalent to daylight. A good thing to note about these lights is that they are placed in a ring around the top of the orb, which means that when your plants grow, they won't be leaning in any weird directions. They should just grow straight up. And I can honestly say I've had that with mine. I do find if I put my biob near a window and the lights are on, I do find that the window light still pulls the plants. But if you want to place your biob in a, you know, a setting where no no windows are and there are no lights, then this will be absolutely fine. You won't get any weird leaning plants. The lighting is on a day-night cycle. That happens as soon as you give the biob power. So as soon as you turn the biob on, this cycle will begin. Unfortunately though, you can't actually control the brightness of these lights. So they are at fixed brightness. Now they do come on a cycle where they kind of fade in and fade out. So a day and night cycle. You can't actually customize this at all. You can only choose when it starts and when it stops. 
biops. The lighting cycle for the biop is as follows. So when the cycle begins, there is a low light that will become gradually brighter for the first 30 minutes, which is supposed to simulate a sunrise. The lights then maintain full brightness for 12 hours. This is followed by a gradual fade to dark for a final 30 minutes, which is supposed to simulate dusk. The orb will then be dark for 11 hours and the cycle will begin thereafter. You can change when this cycle starts by holding the little lever at the back of your biob down for around about three seconds and that should start off the cycle from that moment. So we do know that plants need anywhere between 12 and 16 hours of sunlight a day. So this biob does meet that standard, but it doesn't massively meet that standard. And it is a shame that you can't customize how long these lights stay on for. So if you want to have your lights on for say 16 hours a day, I'm afraid that's not possible. So let's move on to talking about the fan inside the biob. Now, the main job of this fan is to circulate the air, of course, for your plants, but also to make sure that no condensation appears on the biome. This is, of course, to prevent any obstruction from you seeing your beautiful plants inside your orb. I can confirm this is the case. I haven't had any condensation throughout the entire time I've owned this orb at any given point, and I believe I have my orb on the maximum fan setting, which I'll now get into. So the fans on the biome have three settings. These are low, medium, and high. I feel like people are going to ask me about this, so I will tell you now that I've had the fans on the three different speeds and personally I can't really hear anything. It's no louder or more intrusive, I would say, than a laptop fan or something equivalent. You can hear something, of course, when you go right up to the bio, but generally in terms of like the ambience of a room, you won't hear a thing. Okay, so let's move on to the mist. So in the same way that you can change your fan settings, you can also change your mist settings. These settings are the same as the fan settings. They are low, medium, and high. What I will say at this point is, I don't know what low, medium, and high is in terms of humidity, which I will get to in just a second. In order to maintain your desired humidity level, the bio will periodically release a kind of smoky waterfall from the top of the orb that will kind of cascade down onto your plants. And I must say, this does genuinely look very aesthetically pleasing. The cool thing about this is if you bring someone over to your house or you want to show them the biob in a little bit more detail and you want to show them this mist because it does look very cool and very theatrical all you need to do is just tap the little lever on the back of the orb and you should get a little squirt of mist so people can see just how cool the mist is so of course the important stuff what is high humidity what is low humidity now i haven't had full time to figure this out as i have an obliquer in this orb and i'm not really prepared to take the humidity onto the low setting. I did check the biob manual and at least my manual when I got my orb does not give any information as to what percentage humidity this orb maintains. I did look around on the internet and I have seen a few hits that confirm a 75% humidity. I did stick a hygrometer into my biob and I measured around 85%. I know for a fact in the past I've had it up to 95% but as of late, I've been measuring it at about 85. So I can't really give you a specific answer as to what humidity level this orb maintains. I can't really talk about humidity with this biob without mentioning humidity mist that always where it basically tells you to use. So in the misting unit inside the lid, there is a reservoir that you fill up with humidity mist. Now, apparently you are supposed to use humidity mist because it's formulated with a specific level of electrolytes in order to tell the low level water sensor that the reservoir is empty and it needs to be filled. A representative from OAS back in the day also told me that the humidity mist makes sure there are no water marks down the side of the orb as well. So I'm guessing it does both of those things. Apparently, if you use regular tap water or distilled water, then the mist reservoir in the top will think it is empty and it will not produce any mist. I don't know if that's true or not. I can't say as to whether that's true or not. So a quick word on price before I go into generally kind of my thoughts on the orb and just the experience overall that I've had with the orb.
So the price of this, as I mentioned before, is around about 350 degree British pounds, which is, as of recording this video, $439. This to me feels a little bit pricey for the level of sophistication that this orb has. This orb is made of acrylic. You can change like, you know, low, medium, high on your fan and your humidity, but you can't change anything else. You know, you can't change the light settings or, or anything like that. I did do a quick check and this buy orb is really the only terrarium of this kind that exists on the market at the moment. I am aware of one or two that are in the works at the moment. I think they're on Kickstarter, but for now the biop doesn't really have any competition. So it's quite hard to say my thoughts on the price a little bit because I don't really have anything to compare it to. So it doesn't have any competition, but is it any good? Do I recommend it? As I mentioned at the start of the video, I've had this biob for around about a year. It might be a little bit beyond a year now. And this biob for approximately six months ran without any issues at all. Around about the six month mark, I did run into some, shall we say, performance issues. These issues quite honestly ranged. They started and they stopped, but I think at one point I had an issue where the orb continuously projected mist and it wouldn't actually stop. Obviously it stopped when the reservoir was empty, but if you filled that reservoir up, it would continually mist until it was basically empty. I tried plugging it, unplugging it, plugging the lid in, unplugging the lid in, plugging the reservoir in, plugging it out, and I tried everything and it didn't really stop. I think I left the orb unplugged for around about a week and then it seemed to go away. So I don't know if that's a problem with water or anything else, but I've definitely had a few problems with the lid. I've also had a few problems with the orb randomly flashing. Sometimes it goes off, sometimes it goes back on. I don't feel like the cable work is of the best quality because I don't see how else this would happen. So that's a couple of issues I've had with the lid. And I know that a few people have contacted me, some subscribers, and have said that they have had similar issues with their lids as well. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I do have two biobs. Now this biob was given to me by Always and the other biob I purchased from Amazon as it happens. This biob has given me significantly less issues than the one I purchased from Amazon. Now, I don't know why that is. It could be a fault with a batch. I don't really know. But I know that the one that I purchased from Amazon, I think I got round to opening it quite late. So I was kind of past the returns period. But that biob didn't mist correctly from the get go. And it repeatedly misted all of the plants inside the orb until the reservoir ran out. So I couldn't really use the reservoir. As a result, I've had to not put anything in the orb until I can figure out basically what's going wrong. Because all of these plants were just getting saturated and the substrate was wet and it, it wasn't cool. So for now, the white biob doesn't actually have anything in it. This one has been okay. This one has had significantly less problems, but it hasn't been without its problems. I have made some customizations to this biob that are probably definitely not recommended, but it's kind of what I've had to do to get it to work for me. So the first thing I would like to note is that when you get your biob, always recommends a pure coir substrate. So basically just, just coir, right? No drainage, no perlite, no nothing. Now I used to have this substrate, but it was always really, really, really wet all of the time. So when it came to rescaping this biob, I replaced all of that. I chucked out all of the coir and I placed inside it my Aroid mix. If you want to know any more about this mix, I will leave the link to that below but since I have placed that mix in there, the soil is a lot nicer. It is constantly just lightly moist all the way through. It's not excellent seeing all the perlite in the substrate when you look around the orb, but you've got to do what you've got to do, right? I definitely recommend a chunkier mix over coir. I don't necessarily recommend just coir for nearly any plant in there. And that is for some other reasons that I'm about to go into very shortly. Before that, I'd like to say a few words on the lights. I've had to tape over 50% of the lights in the biob. This is basically because most of my aroids were yellowing and I couldn't stop them from yellowing. And I knew by the second time round after I changed the substrate, it wasn't the soil because I changed it and it was chunkier and it was lightly moist. Therefore, it could have only really been the lights. So since I've taped up every other light on the biob to take that lighting down to 50%, the plants are a lot greener and they're thriving a lot more. Depending on the plant that you have inside the orb, you may or may not need to do this. So if you have a plant that is stupidly high light, you're probably not gonna necessarily have a problem. This is just something I found with the plants inside my orb. It was just 
too much for them. It, the leaves were yellowing, they're getting bleached up. It wasn't attractive at all. I think I actually killed a few anthuriums putting them in here. I'm pretty sure I killed maybe three or four. Another thing that I've had a serious issue with, I've had a bit of an issue feeding my plants, right? And this is another reason why I don't like the Koya that always recommends. It doesn't have any nutrients inside the substrate. So how can you feed it, you ask? Because when you have to water this orb, of course, when you're pouring the waters down the sides, that salt buildup is going to build up in this reservoir and you can't necessarily get it out. So you're getting a huge salt buildup, which I don't love. I haven't seen any problems of yet with the plants in here, but that does not mean to say they're not coming. And I imagine it might be quite imminent sometime soon. And I do think maybe people should do this annually is completely replant the orb and, you know, clean out that bottom reservoir. But the only way you can clean it is to dismantle it. So when I did make my Aroid mix up, I actually have, I think I have some charcoal in there, but I have worm castings in there. And worm castings, if nobody knows, it's worm poop, but it is a natural fertilizer. So think of it as like a slow release fertilizer. So if you're gonna plant this up, honestly, take it from me, I wouldn't put in the basic coir that always give you, even though they do recommend it. I would do whatever mix you wanna do, but add in a slow release fertilizer, whether that be worm castings or something else you would prefer to use. I 100% recommend you doing that. It is very difficult to feed when you can't clear the water reservoir at the bottom. And being that I have a Monstera Oblique in there, that gives me more anxiety than I would like, believe me when I say that. So I think those are the modifications I've done to the oil. I have had a few other problems and I'll kind of go into them now in a little bit of a pros and cons just to kind of give you a summary of everything we've gone through and to kind of help you decide whether this will work for you or not. So I'll start with the pros of this biop, this terrarium. A definite plus point of this biop, and I cannot deny this, you can leave your plants in here for months at a time. I would honestly say a minimum of two months at a time without any maintenance at all. All. As long as your water reservoir is topped up, you will not have to do anything. If you go on holiday or you go traveling, this thing will be absolutely fine. Just top it up before you leave and you're not going to have a problem at all. Another pro of this orb personally for me is that this does look quite nice at night in a low light environment when the lights are on inside the orb. It's a really, really nice way of viewing your plants. It's a really beautiful, delicate little display. So in that sense, it's quite nice. So I'm now gonna take you through the cons and the downsides of this orb. So I'll start by saying something I haven't mentioned yet, which is that I have had prolific gnat issues in this orb. And at first I thought it was because I had a gnat infestation in the flat. I planted this up the first time at my old flat. And I thought that when I'd been planting it up in that original video, that because I left the lid open and I had a few gnats in the room, that a couple of gnats had gone into the lid and they just bred like wildfire in the orb. I thought that was the reason why I had that infestation. Unfortunately, it's not. And if you have any kind of gnats in your house, if they go anywhere near this orb, they will find their way in and they will lay eggs and they will get to work. And that is because near the top of the orb, when you lift up the lid, you can see some tiny, don't get me wrong, tiny little air vents. These are the perfect size for gnats to just creep on through and start flying around. It's very irritating. For a long, 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 long time, I tried everything I could. I didn't use biological pests in the orb because I didn't want that kind of appearance. So that's on me kind of thing. I did also use the yellow sticky strips for gnats. So for a long time, I had this orb sat there with yellow strips in it which did not look sexy, to say the least. I've managed to get that under control now. It's not perfect though, and that's a big downside of this. Now I know to circulate the airflow, obviously you're gonna have to have some ventilation, but it'd be really nice if this ventilation included some kind of mesh where bugs and pests couldn't get through, but the air could, because any gnat, any fruit fly, anything you want can just go straight through those holes. Another con of this biob, as I mentioned before, is that the humidity settings and lack of readout out, leave a lot to be desired for me. I don't necessarily think this might just apply to me as I know most of the plant people I follow on Instagram, on YouTube, nearly all of them have, you know, those little hygrometers that tell you what the humidity is for your plants, right? So the fact that this biome doesn't give me that information in any way, shape or form, and that doesn't have to be a digital readout, that could be some kind of analog, you know, meter on the biome. The fact that it doesn't give me that for that price 
when I would consider that component to be a very low cost component. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I would love to see at least a readout. Obviously, I would love to be able to control the humidity percentage in the same way that I can on my humidifier because different plants require different things. Similarly, I would love to be able to change the light settings. All we can do currently with this orb is change when the cycle starts and stops. I don't personally love the fact that it is only 12 hours of light. I would like a little bit more than that. But of course, there is no way of setting this. I would also love to be able to run the lights at a dimmer level, whether that's either on the orb or via an app or something like that. I would love to be able to do that. For me, that's a feature that is missing. I do feel for this price point that that could have been included, even, even as basic as the way that always have done the fans and the humidity settings. Like if you just had three little taps for the brightness of your lights, even that would be something if you wanted to keep the cost low. But I would really expect to see more of those types of features, especially when this is aimed, remember, at the houseplant market, I would expect to see more of these features. I've mentioned this as well, obviously, but a manner of accessing the water reservoir on this thing would be great. Maybe that's either pulling out the reservoir at the bottom, it's something you can fully remove and clean. That would be amazing because I don't think it's right to not be able to access this reservoir when you have things like maintaining pH, preventing salt buildup and all the rest. I would love to be able to have that. For me, that's a little bit subpar. Again, a little bit of a con and I don't necessarily know how fixable this is, but the capillary matting inside the orb can damage the roots of your plants if the roots of your plants grow into it and kind of meld into it. I don't know if it would be better going for an option like other brands do where they use a certain substrate to pad out the gap between the water level and the soil that is not going to be an issue. So maybe something that resembles lecker a little bit more to stop that from happening. That would probably be better than capillary matting because honestly, I'm a little bit afraid of taking the oblique out of this, which I will get into in a minute because I'm genuinely worried that I'm going to lose roots on it. And that's one of the reasons why it's still in here. <laughs> Another thing, and this might not necessarily be a con because I kind of understand their design choice in doing this, but I don't love the fact that the power cord goes all the way down on the back of the orb, right? It does kind of ruin aesthetics. I know that they have probably done this because all the brains are inside the lid and all of the electronics are in the lid. This has probably been done for two reasons that I can think of. The first reason is if something goes wrong with your biob, and I know this to be a fact, always will take the lid from you, you post the lid back to them and they will send you a replacement lid and they will run tests on the old lid. So it's kind of cool that the whole brains of the operation can be picked up and replaced. This does mean, of course, if you do have an issue, you don't have to return the whole unit, right? Because you're going to disrupt all your plants. So that is probably a large part of why the power cable sits up at the top and not the bottom. The second reason, of course, is probably to avoid the most amount of water as humanly possible. As the water reservoir for feeding, you know, watering the plants is at the bottom. I do still think that maybe something could be done to revise this. I I don't know. I'm not always, but it would be nice to just not have that power cord down the back of the orb. It could just be done a little bit better. So I've taken you through what the biob is, what the features of it are, a quick breakdown of kind of how it works, and I've given you a rundown of the main pros and cons of the biob. But I guess the last thing we have to talk about is, in essence, do I recommend this? And I don't feel like I can address this without mentioning the oblique inside this biob, because I am well aware that the majority of biob sales have come from the fact that I placed an oblique in this thing and it grows. I know this because I see comments on this all the time on Facebook. And I know this because whenever people purchase obliques from me or from other sellers, nine times out of 10, they are placing them into biobs. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. What I will say is that I do not recommend you buy one of these terrariums if you are going to place a Monstera Oblique in it. Do not do it. I can say this about the Oblique, but I can also say it about any plant that is, you know, sentimental to you, important to you in any way, or even just high value. If this orb malfunctions, you have just lost a hell of a lot of money. And that could be with the misting and getting, you know, leaves overly soggy, or it could be to do with the lighting or anything else. If this malfunctions, you could have a serious problem on your hands and you probably can't replace the plant that's in it. If we're talking about an oblique, that is, it's gonna be unlikely that you're gonna be able to replace this plant. Also, of course, the issue with the capillary matting makes this even more of a risk. And I will tell you personally, 
I am terrified of taking this oblique out of this orb, even though that I know it desperately needs to be removed from this orb. I am genuinely terrified that I'm going to cause this oblique damage by removing it. It's not good. Of course, as well, if you are getting this bio orb, and this is part of my, you know, do I recommend it, do I not recommend it? If you're getting this bio for aroids, I absolutely categorically do not recommend it because I haven't really had any aroid that has thrived inside this orb without me doing stuff to change it, i.e. taping it up. Now, a lot of people might not have problems taping it up and that's fine. What I will say is you will have to continuously tape it up because the lights burn holes through the tape and it doesn't matter what tape you use. I've tried to use every type of tape but over time the lights will burn a hole. Arguably this is a fire hazard so that's not a great thing if you're relying on that to keep your plants alive. There is of course the issue that I have which is feeding the plants. Now my oblique tends to glug a lot of feed so I have to feed it very often. I have developed a little bit of a trick in doing so but that usually means I'm giving this thing a very high concentration at soil level and I do not recommend doing that. I don't think that's good for your plants at all. Another thing is the height of this orb. Now, most aroids are not going to love you being in here because generally speaking, aroids, you know, climb or they're long-leaved or, you know, whatever else. They grow quite tall. They have long petioles. So for the majority of aroids, yeah, maybe they're fine in here while they're babies, but you're not going to be permanently keeping them in here. You're going to have to keep pulling them in and out. I don't find any aroid that I've placed in here that thrives. Not only that, but if we're talking about specifically an obliqua, my obliqua is ready to climb. It's failed to climb because it knows it has nothing to climb. The obliqua is now at the point where I need to remove it because it's too big for the orb. I can't get an obliqua to ever climb in here, which is a shame because it will never reach the level of maturity that, of course, is the goal. So in that sense, the biorb is really a temporary solution at best if you want to either put an obliqua in there or put any aroids in there. That said, I do think this product is okay, but what I will say is this, I do not recommend this product for a Monstera Oblica whatsoever. Please do not do it. You will probably run into problems and you may incur damage. I do not recommend it for a Monstera Oblica or any aroid. What I do recommend it for are smaller plants such as carnivorous plants, smaller orchids, jewel orchids would be very nice in here as well. But do I recommend it for aroids or oblique or anything of the sort? No, absolutely not. And I want to make it clear right now that the only reason that this oblique is in this orb is because I haven't found anything better than this orb yet because there isn't really anything on the market. I think if you want to put an oblique or, you know, aroids in here or anything else, you should probably do what I'm going to do. And that is I'm going to custom build a terrarium for this thing, basically. And I do recommend that option to anybody that wants to keep an oblique. Don't go for one of these. They're too problematic. Go for your own terrarium where you can customize your oblique's needs. Again, I apologize for talking about the oblique so much, but as I said before, I am aware of just the sheer volume of people that have bought this all based off me having an obliquer inside it. Overall, I think for the price, it works. I do find it to be a little bit basic for the price. I think we could have had more functionality for that price. But at the moment, it's kind of unrivaled because there are no companies that have successfully come out with an alternative. If I am wrong about that, of course, please leave that information in the comments and I'd be happy to take a look at those. What I feel would really add to this video would be for anybody that has had experience with these biobs to please leave a comment below and tell us all a little bit about your experience and that can be that doesn't mean that you've bought it because you put an obliquer in it or not just generally maybe what you have growing in it and how you have found it because i know people will watch this review and take my experience but it's not just about my experience right loads of people have these biobs and i think it'd be really great as somebody that's watching this video and that has watched this review and is still a little bit unsure they can look at the comments and get a kind of general consensus as to whether they think you know this is what Worth it for them and this is a product that they'd like to try because it's not cheap you know it's it is up there for a terrarium and lastly if you guys know of any smart terrariums that currently exist so they're not on kickstarter that i'm possibly able to buy and try for you guys please let me know in the comments because i will totally totally do that i will you know scape it up i'll give you my first impressions and you know we'll grow some plants in them and we'll see how they are so if you know of anything that you think I should try, please leave them in the comments below. Now then, I may have mentioned this on and off before, maybe in an Instagram Live, maybe on Facebook, I don't really know. But I have actually had, and nobody knows this, 
I have had another terrarium sat in this flat for approximately a year now. And the terrarium I've had sat in my flat is the Biopod, which is different from the Bio. Please do not go out and buy this. I'm not recommending it yet. I haven't assembled it yet because I've heard a whirlwind of stuff about it. But originally this was going to be moved from this bio a year ago into the bio pod where I thought it would be a better fit. As of recording this, I don't have experience in the biopod and I don't have, you know, I haven't set it up. I haven't heard great things, so I have not done that. A quick word on the Adansonii that's actually in this orb as well, because I didn't really mention it, but I find that the Adansonii is yellowing a lot in there. And I don't know if this is the lighting because the lighting's burned through the tape again. It's now getting too bright or what. But I am definitely noticing some leaf drop on my variegated Adansonii, which is also not great. So variegated plants, maybe just... I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying be a little bit careful because nothing's crisped up for me yet, but I fear that it might. That kind of concludes my review. I know this is very in-depth, but I didn't feel like I could talk about this product, especially at this price point, without giving you a bit more of an in-depth review. I wanted this to be as helpful as humanly possible. Thank you very much for watching this review of the Biob Air 60 Terrarium. Please feel free to leave any comments you'd like down below, whether that's suggesting me something to review or thoughts on this product. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you part of the ever-growing family. And until then, I will see you next week. Bye guys!